Hello and welcome to the Museum of Everything Else YouTube channel. This is the YouTube channel sort of documenting, well currently it's documenting the progress of a rather strange idea I've had for the last uh, few years which is setting up a museum which is finally sort of happening. I know it's probably the worst time ever to set up a museum but it sort of gives an opportunity to kind of sit back and just think about exactly what the heck is going on and what I'm getting myself into. If you look at my other YouTube channel, Look Mum No Computer, uh, you probably know that I'm a bit of a hoarder. And I've been trying to find an excuse to legitimise this hoarding. Uh, yeah, I know. The idea of sharing it with other people and stuff and sharing this rather odd passion, uh, you know, is something that's uh, sort of quite interested me. In this video, I wanted to talk about a certain aspect of it that I think will be uh, quite, I'm really quite excited about, and that is exploded views. Uh, what is an exploded view? Well, if you think about an exploded view in an illustration of something that's exploded, it's like all of the parts, it's an amazing illustration. You look around, search up exploded view, and it will just have a picture of something with all its parts, like, illustrated coming to pieces. And when I was a kid, it was like the best thing ever to see. And going to museums like uh, my grandma and granddad's uh, lighthouse museum, or like Duxford, or some aircraft museum, exploded views were always the things that just fascinated me because I had a fascination of what was going on on the insides. So I figured why not look into exploded views as the sum of the installation pieces. If you look behind me, there is the first section of exploded views I've been trying out. Uh, there's yet to be any documentation kind of written for any of these things, hence why there's no there's no front panels in there yet, there's no glass to stop anybody from going Ooh! but uh, there will be, so the plan is to write a few bits of documentation on what is going on and then, uh, yeah, and then cover it up and stuff. But if you look here, we've got a little bit of uh, what I call like just uh, awesome shots of a lot of stuff here is just test equipment that has been exploded. Quite a few of the people watching right now has probably seen plenty of insides of machines, but not everybody has. So I think it's quite interesting to show the different parts of uh, machines and stuff, especially obsolete and old equipment because it always looks amazing on the inside. It looks just as good on the inside as the outside. And as time has got on and um, manufacturing and engineering has got better and better, it's got a lot more boring and just a lot more, I don't know, it just turned into a mush of like, Meh. but before it just looked fantastic. Uh, let's have a quick closer look. So there's going to be a lot of cabinets in this place of just oddities and for instance this box down here that was given by a fella called Marcus in Berlin uh, at a show that I played and uh, I didn't really know what to do with it because it has 1960s ceramic uh, potentiometer knobs on them but they had no grub screws so it was very hard to use and uh, them being pot and stuff it's like I, I just needed to think of a good project for these however I haven't thought of them yet so I figured let's just pop them in there. There's also some 1980s Russian light dependent resistors and some 1980s German LEDs. I think they just look absolutely beautiful. So I figured, why not just sit it there? It looks nice with a little bit of documentation underneath of what is going on. Initially, when I was talking about the Museum of Everything Else, my storage for like things that people were sending in uh, was a little bit bad. And sadly, uh, for instance, this one, I lost the label of who uh, sent it in and please let me know if you've sent this one in uh, then please let me know because it's a homemade like a uh, test oscillator if you look on the inside side you get to look at how neat somebody's workmanship is here so if anybody can uh, fill me in on uh, who made this and stuff please let me know because uh, I'm struggling to write what was on here because the piece of paper that was attributed with it uh, especially in the move I've lost it up here we have a simulated devices uh, oscilloscope slash uh, it's more like a wobulator because it's got uh, uh, test oscillators inside it but it's just the fact is that a lot of um, well kids and people my age and stuff like that have not seen equipment that looks quite like this especially on the inside you can see it's just like uh, I need to write a lot of stuff about the technology involved. There's a there's the oscilloscope. Um, there's the front of the oscilloscope there, and as you can see, if you look in there, I need to figure out some documentation for this part. 
It keeps on going, especially with this beautiful bandpass filter that has got this uh, switch that goes down into tiers. And it's just like, you just don't get stuff like that nowadays. You just don't get it anymore. And that's basically what this video is about. It's like, oh, you just don't get stuff like this anymore. It's just not made like this, but it's just absolutely beautiful. So it's like figuring out what to write about. And there's uh, stuff down here, for instance, there's a the back of a Brawl and Cure um, fixed filter bank. Uh, this one sadly is uh, broken at the minute and fig I figured whilst it's on the to-do list of what to fix uh, may as well have it looking out with all of its um, cards and stuff sitting out at the back also there's things like the 1022 uh, beat frequency oscillator the Brawl and Cure uh, it's not super obvious from the front but there were actually different versions on the inside the first versions were actually made valve and then they moved over to solid state and there isn't like I thought it would be nice to have an example down down here sorry for the lighting it's still a very big work in progress but for instance there is one on the left which is sadly uh, not a functioning one currently it's a valve version of the beat frequency oscillator so you can see it has telefunk and valves in it oh just look at the telefunk and valves notably it's a lot heavier because you have the extra transformer when on the solid state you don't actually have an extra transformer so you look in here it's just a lot more sparse and it's just to show the progression of technology uh, to kids obviously i need to figure out something to write about with these two because it's like a looking at it's like the game of spot the difference you know what I mean? Oh, it's so cool, so cool. Also inside some of these cabinets, I'm thinking of setting up functioning ones. Obviously there'll be a cover over the front, but they'll be functioning, but uh, bare. So for instance, this uh, oscilloscope, this probably won't be a functioning one because the capacitors, I've chosen not to uh, revamp it because they just look beautiful, but I've just got to find a few that are like uh, nice and stable and stuff. Um, but just look at that, it's beautiful, absolutely beautiful. So this is the test equipment section and room and it's like, it's slowly filling up down to my avid hoarding. If you look above, there was actually something I managed to get last week. Uh, yeah, I was just scoping through eBay and nobody else bid it on them. But this whole simulated devices set of uh, test equipment that I need to just, uh, I'm gonna take a, one each week and just revamp them, uh, recap them. These ones I'm gonna start with, these timers. I think that'll be really nice. Uh, right now, I am trying to be quite strict with getting some things done. This week, I concentrated on an Electronica 7 clock and I came up with a little bit of a problem. I ordered the wrong tubes to redo the whole front screen. So that's gonna be a little moment. And then there's also a Transcendent 2000 that I'm currently revamping at the minute. There will obviously be videos on these and I'm gonna be doing videos videos on fixing all of them, especially from somebody who is learning on the job. Me, me. So if anybody wants to collaborate on ideas of like fixing these stuff up, uh, well, please let me know. I'm gonna be working through them slowly and as they function, they'll be in more of an interactive uh, way, but right now they're gonna be nice and still just to show the beauty of obsolete technology. I'm leaving all the writing to nearly the end because obviously uh, they all need to be uh, listed of what they are and stuff. There's still a bit of building work, but hopefully that'll be done by the end of the month. Quite a rough looking Korg MS-10. This is gonna be my favorite one. Uh, I'm thinking of uh, taking it apart. Obviously you can put it back together and get it functioning again, but having it exploded and having sticks to make it like stick out and just look weird, that is gonna be a video in itself as well. I think that's gonna be quite exciting to show what a uh, 70s synthesizer looks like blown up. Another one I think that will be quite an interesting thing is a Big Muff by Electro Harmonics. I think that might be a, a wall feature and stuff like that. I'm talking to a number of creators at the minute to try and figure out how to make it work to kind of show other interesting oddities, especially DIY creations and stuff that have been sat in storage that I could borrow and stuff. Uh, there's a few that I'm uh, kind of commissioning. Uh, I know it's quite crazy, commissioning machines to be built, but uh, I think it'll be really worthwhile. There's gonna be a video synthesizer section that I think is gonna be straight off interactive and there's gonna be a few interactive sections of synthesizers, uh, but me and my partner, Melanie, who is helping out as well, we're try currently trying to figure out how to make residencies possible and stuff like that. So uh, please, so, so if you're interested, so if you're interested in the progression of a numpty like me trying to set up a museum like this, then please subscribe to this video channel. If you want to support this rather ridiculous idea, I know it's in the early phases, but when it's ready, it's going to be ready, uh, then please look at my Patreon because this is basically funded by the support on Patreon after building the big machines that are going to end up in the museum anyway because I've got nowhere else to store them. Because like I said in previous videos, this is sort of like a smart way of storing equipment. Instead of it gathering dust, it may as well be gathering 
dust in front of people, right? If you've got any interesting ideas of like themes of what cabinets there should be, because there's gonna be plenty of cabinets, oh man. I've got a pile of these shelves waiting to go up. They're all very firmly drilled into the wall, so these aren't going anywhere, but they're gonna be around everywhere. So I need to figure out different things to put in them. I've got like a valve cabinet that's over there. I'm waiting for these, uh, the floral foam, so you can put the valves in and type and write about what the different valves did and what they do, for instance. But yes, this is gonna be a very interesting journey indeed into, yeah, in obsolete scientific and musical equipment. I'm really into the idea of making exploded views that aren't actually impactful on the machine. So you can just put it together and get it going again. So I don't want to cut anything into it, even though no matter how awesome it is, when you see like half cut open cars in museums or like uh, jet engines with like the bits cut out, I'm not going to do any of that unless it is really far gone. But yeah, there's just a little bit of an insight. Hmm.